There's a play currently on at the CAA Theatre in downtown Toronto called Things I Know to be True. Having seen it a week ago, here's one thing I know to be true. This is one of the best plays I've ever seen. It tells the story of a typical family. Mom, dad, four kids, and all of the sweetness and heartbreak and love and combat you'd expect. And we are delighted to welcome the two actors who play the parents and who are two of our country's finest, Shauna McKenna and Tom McCamus. I am thrilled to have you two in those chairs, I gotta say. Thank you for being here today. <laughs> our pleasure. Thank you. Uh, okay. Tom, this play premiered seven years ago in Australia. Mm. How much did you know about it before you were cast in it? Uh, I had never heard of it until uh, Phil uh, Riccio, who's our director, gave it to me to read and said, I think I got a play you might be, you might like and give it a read and see if you like it. And I read it and at the end of it, I was like a, a mess. I was just a loud sobbing things. I said, okay, I, it, I better do this play. It hit you immediately. Yeah, it hit me immediately. Yeah. How about you, Sean? Same thing. Um, Philip sent me the script and I, I didn't know anything about it and I read it and I was, I was a mess as well. Mm. Yeah, it's accumulative. You know, you don't know where it's going. There's so many surprises and twists and turns in the script, and it very, it's very, it's, it's, it's um, brutally uh, honest. I think. Tis, tis, <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, let's find out what it was about this play and your characters that made you decide I need to play this. Uh, you play an average guy. Mm -hmm. You play an auto worker, gets laid off, busies himself in his retirement years in his garden. Mm -hmm. What about? That scenario fascinated you so much that you thought, I gotta play this guy. <laughs> uh, part of the nice part, uh, I've been playing a lot of kind of old yelly guys, like, you know. <laughs> and uh, this guy's just, he's kind of gentle. I mean, not always, but for the most part, he's just a kind of guy who just enjoys his life and he's peaceful and quiet and um, tries to make things um, nice and, and happy for his family and just loves life. So it was a, a pleasure to be just kind of a guy who putters around in the garden, so. And it, it, it does go on from there. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. It goes other places. But, Gets a bit heavy. But that's the core of who the man is. So it's lovely to be in that core for a while. Now, you play a nurse yes. who is really the, I guess I can say that you're the dominant person in this family. You keep the trains running on time. You're an incredibly strong character. What appealed to you about playing that? Um, that incredibly strong characters also have their complexities and aren't always so strong. Um, Very true. I think she's also, she's at the hub of the family, but as she says, he makes the phone calls behind the scenes. She's shouting the orders, but he's the one who gets things done. So, um, and the fact that uh, she's a mom. She's, you know, she's a mother who never stops worrying about her children, no matter if they're, you know, they're 20, they're 34, they're your kids, right? And they got, your character has a lot to worry about. Because they do get into they, some difficulty. Yes, there there are a lot of family crises in this <laughs> in this story. Uh, we shouldn't give people the impression that this is all death and destruction because oh, there's a lot of funny in this play as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, shall we? Sheldon, you want to show a little clip from this? Here we go. Roll tape, please. Pick up your laundry. It's hanging in your closet. Yeah. Okay, you, whoa, okay. you still do his laundry? Just my shirts. Mom. Well, no. He does his own underwear. Oh, I've known your mother since we were kids. First and only love. If he gets dementia, I'm not looking after him. I've looked after people all my life. Did you meet someone? No. A boy? No. Did he hurt you? Who hurt you? You insured? Dad, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like that's a great example of how like bam, 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 bam. This stuff gets very quick mm -hmm. and the, like the patter. Yeah. You guys got to really be on top of your game. Sean, how do you do that? I'm not always. <laughs> <laughs> you were when I saw oh, you. Oh, well, that's good. Um, it's, you know, and the way we rehearsed, there is no actual set blocking. So you really have to be uh, listening and, and, and playing with each other. And uh, it's, um, you have to keep on your toes. You have to get, you get your line in or they'll move on without you. Yeah. Hmm. You know, so. Has uh, that happened? Oh, yes. It has. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Happened in that clip, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You'd never know it. It all Good. seems so natural. Yeah. Now this is, I mean, you two are veterans of Stratford and you've played some of these, you know, magnificent plays with these long soliloquies and so on. And there are not too many scenes in Shakespeare like that, right? Where you gotta go bam, 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 bam. Yeah. How do you do it? Uh, <clears throat> you, you, do, you listen, 
and um, you try to be present. And you just try to be, um, uh, like for example, like sometimes I'll go and I'll, uh, I'll eat a banana, and then sometimes I'll eat an orange, or sometimes I'll just go and get a drink of water. And, and you basically are just trying to sort of move around a kitchen and make sure you don't get in the way of Sean or something at the same time, being aware that you know you got a line that they do have to hear, so you have to get to a place where the audience can see you to say the line. And it's, uh, when you're thinking like that, it's quite exciting. And it's, uh, it, it's uh, as exciting as Standing up and giving a big Shakespeare speech, you know. So there is a lot more kind of ad libbing of blocking. Yeah. Oh yes. Than yeah. One would assume. Yeah. Because I thought, wow, how are they just like nailing all of those positions? <laughs> so specifically, all that, and you're laughing at me because it's. No, because no. that not was what... the first time that you saw that that particular scene. Sometimes a scene that happens in the garden will happen yeah. out in the in the house, and and vice versa. So you just you just follow the action. Yeah. I I want to. How do I put this? <laughs> you dropped the C word in this play. I did. You dropped the C word, the see you next Tuesday word. Yes, the see you next. Now, I'm, I'm thinking you probably don't do that at Stratford. <laughs> there aren't many occasions oh. which would call for that. <laughs> Maybe just backstage. No, I do. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Do you have any, uh, I don't know, do you have any difficulty with that? Uh, it, it'd be, well, it, it sounds better with an Australian accent. Um, I think it, it, it sort of jumps out at us um, uh, in, in, in my own sound. Um, but no, I don't have a problem with it, especially because the line that follows it is, is, is a funny line. It is, but it... Uh, it's I mean, shocking. It's yes, shocking, it's that's shocking. right. We do not expect yeah. the, the mother of four it's, to be it's dropping It's used that. much more in, in British theater and, and Australian theater than it is in our theater. Yeah. It's, still, it, yeah. it's part of the sort of like normal patter. Um, and here it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, people's jaw drop. And of course, my son's jaw drops when I say it. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you, I, I want to know if you are so into the role and into getting everything just perfect as you're on stage, that as the secrets in your family start to unveil themselves, do you, Tom, can you actually hear the audience Sometimes gasp. Sometimes, you know, there are moments where. Do you hear that? Don't necessarily. But you hear the silence, like you, you, you know, and because we do take a lot of silences when, yeah. when those things hit us, and you can feel that the whole audience is with you in that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I've, I've heard other people have said they've heard off stage. There was a gasp here, but yes. when you're on stage, we don't hear that, or do yes. you? Yes, not on stage, but when no. I'm backstage yeah. listening or in a quick change or something, <laughs> I can hear. <gasps> Yeah. Or, right. or, or when they announce certain things, they go, oh. Yeah, yeah. There was a very vocal, oh, <laughs> uh, yesterday. Um, so you do, you, but you can sense when the audience yeah. is with you. Yeah. And, and of course, laughter is the most immediate response yeah. that you can hear. Um, laughter, so you yes, know. but, but some, you know, some of the reactions oh, are, yes, yes the, the understated gasp or the. Yes, they're, or they're as shocked as we are. <laughs> <laughs> Have you come to any conclusions as to whether the family you are playing yes. is blessedly typical or quite extraordinary? Which is it, do you think? I think it's pretty typical. Yeah. It is, eh? It's just that the circumstances are different or the degrees mm -hmm. of the crisis or, you know, because you, you can't, you, change is inevitable always and upheaval is inevitable in a family and children grow up, mm -hmm. but they still have issues. And you still worry about them. So I think I think uh, I think it is typical. And it's also a look at marriage, a long marriage, and its ups and its downs, and the secrets that are are with that are withheld, and 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 the kind lies, the hurtful truths. You know, it, it takes a long look at that. But love is the foundation, because that's why they're still together, because it's there. Can I get you on that? The the typical yeah. family or extraordinary? Uh, it's certainly recognizable, I think, you know? And that's, uh, I find myself speaking on stage lines that I speak to my wife at home, so, uh, and... <laughs> Which ones? I want to know. But yeah, I, just, I think, and, and also with, uh, I have, uh, my wife and I, we have no kids, and uh, but at the same time, I recognize this family from all my nieces and nephews and all the people that are the families of friends and things like that. So I think, yeah, I think it's recognizable. Hmm. I want to read something that Jane Howard wrote in The Guardian when she reviewed your play. Sheldon, you want to bring this graphic up, please? Things I Know to Be True is a snapshot of life, and like life, it comes with countless themes. Audiences will pull out different strands and different stories to focus on, but ultimately beating its way steadily through the work 
is the low-level fears we all must live with, mm -hmm. that we love too much or that we don't love enough, and that one day we will have to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me go at this again, Sean. Is this a family that loves not enough or loves too much? Both. Both, simultaneously. <laughs> Sim yes, you know, because sometimes you love your family, but sometimes you can't live with them, or you have to <laughs> get away, you have to break away as, as a child and become an adult. And sometimes you only become an adult when you lose your parents, or, or you, you recognize that your parents are just people with their flaws, with their, you know, their screw-ups, and you just <laughs> go, oh, they're like me, you know. Um, so I, I think they love deeply, uh, but uh, sometimes they can't live together. Tom, what about it? Yeah, um, love too. I know certainly in Bob's case, I think he loves too much. I Bob think, is your character. Yeah, Bob's my character, and I think he, he's always, uh, he's a hugger. Like, you know, he's, he's always hugging people, and um, yeah, I think he loves way too much. Mm. And that's what they say, too, that they're a family that always kisses each other yeah, on, yeah. on greetings or goodbye. They're very tactile. Yeah. Um, they show their affection. Um, and the youngest has this idea that they're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's so unlike any other family where the youngest yeah, thinks they are perfect. Yeah, but it's the, the, because yeah. this is your family. This is what you know. This is this. It's sanctuary, right? Home mm. is sanctuary, but it's also can be really suffocating. Mm. Okay, let's talk about how you do what you do. You're doing eight shows a week. Yeah. Eight shows a week. Right. Two on what day? Two on Wednesday. Two on Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Like. How? <laughs> well, it's what you do. When you're an actor, that's yeah. what you do. I mean, if, when we we're at the festivals, you do eight shows a week, uh, but you don't always do the same play. So you'll be doing, you know, uh, Shakespeare, and then you'll be doing a Chekhov or something. But this is eight shows of the same mm -hmm. show, which is a little bit different for us. And yes. It's, uh, you find it kind of difficult. But Phil's process, which is, as we said before, about moving all over the place and being different, makes it a different show yeah. almost every night. Hmm. So. Is that right? So it's, it's, you're never doing the exact same show Consecutively. No. I mean, the lines are yeah. are the givens. Mm -hmm. uh, the story is the given. Uh, the whole tone and mood is, is pretty much the same. But no, it's very different from night to mm -hmm. night, where you're, you find yourself, oh, I'm on the different side of the stage right now. Yeah. And or, you know, you so you just have to adapt and improvise. And as you say, you know, where you would walk. You wouldn't normally walk into somebody or you, <laughs> you so, so the chaos of the kitchen is very lifelike, yeah. because it is, yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know? But when you're doing eight shows a week, yeah. can you have any life outside of doing eight shows a week? Not much. Not much. Not much, um, really. Because neither of you lives in Toronto, no. normally. No. no. But you kind of have to now, don't you? Yes, the thing is, but we both have lots of friends in the city, <laughs> so you know, you want to see them, but you say, okay, we, so you're scheduling, you know, okay, yeah. we can meet you for after the show for an hour or something, but you know. You have to pace yourself because, yeah, it is eight shows a week. And you get to experience a bit of Toronto that I haven't for a long time. Like I, I go to the art gallery all mm -hmm. the time and stuff oh, like that. Okay. So yeah. because I because I don't live here, I don't have any day to day business I have to do. So I'm I'm hanging out in Toronto. I go, well, what am I going to do? Let's, let's yeah. go to the art gallery. Or and I've seen a lot of theater. Yeah. I've gone to yeah. see okay. before before we got into nights. Yeah. I went and saw as much theater as I could because I was here. Anything you want to recommend? Oh. I don't know if they've closed yet. No, I'm not going to recommend any shows but ours. <laughs> no, um, you know, I've seen great shows. I've seen, you know, I saw The Fall on Your Knees and 15 Dogs and uh, Martyr and uh, what else? Is that? Some other things. Seen Pressure yet? No. Not pressure's yet. good. I, I hear it's that's really good. good. Yeah. Pressure's good. Yeah. Yeah. I hear Sorry to plug another play no, while you're no, on. No, but it's, hey, pressure's it's good. Pressure's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Doyle. You wouldn't think that there was a play in having an argument about the weather with yeah. General Eisenhower, but there is. Yeah. Because if you're depending on D-Day landing, having nice weather, I know you got to know your meteorology. I anyway, love that's another. The weather point. network is one of my favorite <laughs> things to watch. So, what do you do, Shauna, when you forget a line? Has that happened? I act like I never have forgotten a line. <laughs> I, ch you know, probably sometimes if I've forgotten a line, I try to make the next line seem seamless and in my thought or, or. Or, or I've done, I've forgotten, it's St. Joan, I've, the opening night, I forgot a line and I just paced around the stage until I came, it came to me. And another actress came up to me after and said, oh, that pause, I wish I had the courage to take a pause like that. <laughs> I think it was Barbara Gordon. Anyway, um, you it was, you it was a fluke. No idea. It was yeah. a fluke. But I just thought, it'll come to me eventually, and it did. And it did. Yeah. Is there, uh, before the line comes to you, mm. is there abject terror? 
No, the, before you, when you realize you're, you're not going to know what it is, if you start thinking about it ahead of time, that's yeah. when the terror comes because you go, don't think about that. Um, when it doesn't come, you think, okay, I know this, it will come. And if not, if you're acting with other people, um, someone may save you. May. Oh, yeah, <laughs> may. And if you're doing a one person show, well, they haven't seen it before, so you just <laughs> you carry on. You know? Tom, how about you? You ever forgotten a line? Oh, yeah, lots of times. And so. what do you do? Uh, sometimes I just make up other lines. Yeah. Sometimes, though, one is, uh, you know, where you're kind of going, there's a giant pause, and you go, what, what's going on? You know, and you suddenly realize yeah. you've forgotten the line, but you thought it was the other person that's forgotten the yes, line. So. Yes, yes. But yeah, usually, usually it does come to you. I've had ones where it, nobody can save you, there's nothing you can do, <laughs> and, it's, and it feels like you're waiting there for like five or ten minutes. It, it usually is, and it's maybe, you know, 30 seconds at the most. But, oh, and, yes. and your brain kind of clicks into go, how do I save myself? And you'll jump to something that you know. Uh, I've done ones where I go, I've got a big speech, and I say, I know if I dry on this one, I just jump to the end of here, and that's fine. So. Hmm. Yeah. Don't you have a prompter, though, somebody who can yell the line at you from the wings? Uh, you don't have that. that no. Well, that'll happen. I, I mean, I've seen it before where if, uh, when actors have been in real trouble, and they just look up at stage management, go line, and then they all call the line. And, yes. and the audience sometimes, because, you, you know, that's the actor's huge fear, but the audience will go, oh, my God, that was so exciting. So, <laughs> yes, yeah. because everybody doesn't know what's going to happen. Right, they yeah. really don't know yeah. what's going to happen. So the, 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 the stakes kind of rise. I mean, I remember doing Search for Signs of Intelligent Life in the Universe, and I was supposed to read something up from a post-it, and a stage management up in the booth at the Belfry Theatre was sticking post-its all up on the window <laughs> thinking I might see and know that... Oh, that's what I do next. <laughs> but um, no, so yeah. You have both done, I mean, decades and decades worth of work at Stratford, for example. Have you ever worked together, the two of you? Yeah, this is our many times. Yeah, many, many times. times. This is our yeah. we've done about ten plays. Nine or ten plays. Ten plays together. Ten yeah. Plays ten plays together. together. Yeah. Okay. How oh, have I missed all of them? How is that possible? <laughs> I'm in Stratford all the time. Oh, I don't we, think I've ever seen you two together in a oh, play. Yeah, we did. Uh, we did okay. Dangerous Liaison yes. together. Yes. We did, we did uh, King John. King John together. We did. Uh, Benefactors here, St. Joan here. Yeah, yeah. Um, 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 uh, Dancing Alunsa we did together. Yes. Okay, this explains Fedra. it. I haven't seen any of those. Fedra. Okay. Uh, so Fedra. Fedra. That's the only other time we played husband and wife is Fedra. Yeah, huh. matchmaker. Yeah. yeah okay, so. can I ask some, like... Personal questions. Dirty little secrets here? Yes. Do you, do you actually have to like him personally in order to do a good job acting opposite him? No, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Yeah, no, same. Reason. Same, yeah. Same. Yeah. So you two actually get on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we do. Yeah. Oh, it's how pretty... disappointing. I was really looking for good dirt <laughs> there or something. Well, no, I Tom, think it... I don't know anybody who doesn't get on with. Do you know? Do you know people well, who sure don't get on with you? I'm sure there are. Oh. <laughs> but uh, the thing is that I mean, if we didn't like each other, we probably wouldn't work together as much. Yes. It's like you, yeah. you, if you don't like somebody, you go, okay, I can, I can do it. But then you go, you know what? I'm just not going to do it the next time. Mm -hmm. So. No. But I adore working with Sean, and we yeah. have a great time. Me too. And, and when you hear what Tom's doing, you go, oh well, okay. Yeah. It's sort of, oh, okay. And you feel, we, we feel just really comfortable together and we can bring a lot of our relationship on stage with these two people and, you know, like, yeah, we, we, we laugh a lot on, in this play together and a lot of it is just Tom and Shauna laughing at each other. Like, oh, he doesn't know what to say next. So he's going to have a big pause here. So what's going to happen? Can I tell you something? It shows. Oh. I mean, you two are just okay. perfect together. Things I Know to Be True, which is now held over to February 26, because mm -hmm. I gather... Folks want to see it, right. and I'm not surprised. Great show. Thank you so much for coming into TVO oh, tonight. This was great. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.